So when you do a lot of cooking throughout the week, you are inevitably going to end up with a lot of kitchen scraps. Whether it's potato peelings, whether it's the tops of carrots, whether it's the little pieces of the onion root or the skin of the onion or whether it's garlic pieces, you're just going to end up with a lot of scraps. And it's really going to be tempting just to kind of throw those in the garbage when you clean up at the end. But I want to encourage you not to do that because there are so many great options of what you can actually do with your kitchen scraps. So what I do is I keep a large bowl at the side of wherever I'm working. And in that bowl, at the end of whatever I'm cooking, I just throw all of my scraps. I also throw in paper towels that are used, egg shells, uh, there's some zucchini bits in here, there's uh, carrots, onions, garlic, some tomato pieces, there's all kinds of stuff going on in this bin. And really anything that came from the ground can go in this bin. Now, I do make an exception when it comes to fruit. So I don't do this with my fruit peelings, I don't do this with my apples, with my bananas, and I especially don't do this with my lemons or limes, anything that has a high acidity to it. And that is because what I do with these scraps is verma composting. So throughout the week, as I'm cooking, these scraps all go into a bowl, and then they are going to be fed to basically a big bin full of worms. Vermicomposting is a pretty cool thing. Basically, it's a bin of worms that lives in your garage or your backyard or your basement. And about once a week or so, you feed them your kitchen scraps. And what they do is they eat those scraps, they release their worm castings or, of course, worm poop. And then those worm castings can go directly into your garden, your raised bed, your container. Really, really great uses in the garden for that. So you're turning what would basically be going to the landfill into really great soil amendments for you to use in the garden to grow more food that you can then use the scraps from to create more soil amendments. Plus, you end up with a lot of happy worms in the process. Now, to do this, you're going to need two large bins. And you're going to begin by taking one of them and drilling a series of holes in the bottom. These holes are going to act for drainage, drainage from the soil, drainage from the vegetables and from the worms. You're going to place the one bin inside the other using something for spacers like bricks or blocks, something like that, maybe some PVC pipe. And then you're going to line the bottom of the bin with newspaper and some topsoil. Uh, you could also use some shreddings from your garden. You could use some, you know, different, different types of soil that you have just in the bottom of the bin in a light, loose layer. Then you're going to add about a cup of vegetable scraps just scattered throughout that soil. And then you can add your worms. Believe it or not, much like anything else these days, you can buy those worms online. So simply go find a great place for red wigglers. You are not looking for night crawlers. Night crawlers don't do the vermicomposting as well as the red wigglers do. The red wickler worm actually stays just below the top of the soil. And in doing so, it can eat all the food and create worm castings and continue to work for a long period of time. In addition, if the worms are really happy, they will make baby worms. And pretty soon you will have a really large bin full of worms that can handle quite a bit of food. So once you get your worms in there, you periodically add more food as the, worms, as the worm colony grows, you add more and more, and you cover it with a layer of newspaper or cardboard so that it stays dark for the worms so they can do their work in the dark. They don't like light, so if you do turn a light on, you'll see that the worms begin to go a little bit below the surface. So I'm going to be taking this bin and I'm going to be feeding it to the worms moving some things around, and you'll see what this process looks like and why it's great for you to save your vegetable scraps for vermicomposting. All right, so we're down here in the basement. Lighting's a little off, but that's because the worms like it dark. And here you will actually see the worm bin. So what we have here is a bin with holes in the bottom inside of another one. And I'm just going to take this lid off. And when I do, I always do it kind of carefully in case there's worms on the top. Inside, you will see the cardboard. The cardboard keeps it dark in here for the worms. It absorbs some of the moisture. So I'm just going to pull the cardboard back. And inside the worm bin, you're going to see the newspaper that I keep on the first layer. All kinds of kitchen scraps. And then 
When I dig in close, we'll pull the lights up so you can see. When I dig in, you'll actually see, aside from all the scraps, lots of worms down in here. So all kinds of worms living in the bin. And they're eating the food. So if you dig in here toward the bottom, you'll find all kinds of really good worm castings. So in terms of a soil amendment, this is great for the garden. And it's all down here at the bottom. So as the worms eat the food, they leave the castings behind. And so the worm bin works like that. There's actually the butternut squash from the butternut squash pasta. You can check out that video on the YouTube channel. So when I'm all done putting the vegetables in, I mix it all around. Then I put a thin layer of newspaper or paper towels on top, like so. Then I cover them back up so they can get their rest and they can eat in peace. I use the cardboard. I lightly press it down. And that's how you take care of your worm bin. So save your kitchen scraps. Consider a worm bin in your basement. It's awesome for your garden and it's awesome for your kitchen scraps.